Thank you very much. So now I'd like to uh, discuss calculation of this entanglement entropy. So basic method of calculating entanglement entropy in quantum field theory is called replica method. Replica method also used in different subjects, like random system and so on. But here, replica method is very simple, just this equality. So entanglement entropy is, of course, minus trace rho log rho, but I also already mentioned we can first compute rho trace a to the rho a to the n's, n's, and take derivative n and set to n equal 1, then we, we get rho log rho, and which is a von Neumann entropy, equivalent to this entanglement entropy. And by using that fact that trace rho a to the uh, trace of this rho is always normalized to be 1, we can just rewrite this way log of this trace rho to the n's. So this is called, this very simple idea. But this is a bit subtle. We have to be careful because n is originally integers, but now we analytically continue to any real number or complex number. Sometimes probably this is subtle, but uh, so far, as far as I know, most of the example, all examples people consider this always okay about this replica thing. So the first, first simplest example is two-dimensional confirmed field theory. But this is the only example where we get analytical control <coughs> of these calculations, starting from this Kolzeras and Wilczek and also Karlis. But in this case, we can analytically compute in many different choice of subsystems of two-dimensional conformal field theory. But of course, this idea of replica method is also useful in a practical calculation using numerical simulation. So to evaluate the entanglement into being higher dimensional quantum field theory or some mass gap to the quantum field theory and so on. So now we would like to explain more about this. So especially focus on this two-dimensional quantum field theory. And to proceed, it is useful to work in path integral formalism. Let us remember that this ground state of wave function in path integral formalism written just path integral from t minus infinity to some time, time slice, t equals zero, we take t equals zero. This is project, this minus infinity project down to ground state. This is a Euclidean time, project down to ground state. And at this point, we have many field configuration. This is a, this argument of this wave functions. And also we have black bucket, and the opposite one is pass integral from plus infinity to here. We have some many different uh, uh, field configuration here. So now we exp compute this uh, reduced density matrix trace over B. <laughs> so this is the time slice. And now we divide uh, this line, this space one dimensional line into A and B this way. And we trace over B. This means we just paste with each other. So previously we have this two picture. We just paste everything. Then we just have an overlap, psi, 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 which is normalized to be one. But we want to partially overlap, partially take trace about B. So they just paste each other. And still this region A is opened. So we have some cut upper boundary condition and lower boundary condition. These two boundary, config boundary configuration is the argument of this reduced density matrix A and B. So we can pass integral method, we can realize this density matrix in this way. So we have to specify A and B. And, but we want to just get some distress, rho A to the N, so we just contract index this way. So this means that we have consists of n, n copy of this seed and paste with each other this way. This line B is paste with this line, another line B, and this way successively. And finally, we paste this lower line to upper line here. And in this way, we get some closed manifold. Closed manifold looks like this. Some we have n seeds, n seeds with some cut. This is some n-sheeted Riemann surface, which we denote sigma n. But this looks like a bit singular, because if we go around here, it's 2 pi n, not 2 pi. But anyway, so we have this kind of uh, representation, which says that this trace rho a to the n, which is very important quantity to, to find entanglement entropy, just partition function on this a bit singular manifold. This cut, um, Riemann surface is cut. <coughs> so this is a 
very uh, important point of this calculation. So in summary, so press row at n is Zn, which is a partition function on this manifold. And actually, to normalize, so n equal 1, this is goes to just 1. So we normalize this way. <coughs> and this Zn is a partition function on this sigma n. And then we need to, of course, evaluate this Gn. Naively, this looks different, difficult, but in two dimensions, in two dimensional conformal field theory, we can do it in a rather convenient way. So the, yeah, we can actually compute Zn for any cases, but in two dimensional conformal field theory. But to give some elementary explanation, let's con concentrate, first concentrate on free field theory, free scalar field, but there are actually complex free scalar field. This phi is a complex value. That means we have real, two real scalars, so central charge equal to two. So then this sigma n is a computation of this Zn is equivalent to, it, to introduce n different, but it looks identical, but it's different <coughs> replica fields, phi 1, phi 2, phi n, on just a single complex plane. So we have a single field on this strange manifold, but we can consider n different fields with a single seat. So we have n phi 1 to phi n fields, and assuming that if we go around this cut, phi k goes to k plus 1. If you go this way, then k goes to k minus 1. This is precisely the same as just single, if we consider some just single scalar field on this manifold. This is also called replica method. We have many n replicas. And uh, yeah, so this looks already very uh, convenient, but uh, actually we can do some. Fourier transformation, discrete Fourier transformation, this complex scalar field, and we take this way, discrete Fourier transformation. After this, then we get, uh, uh, sorry, I probably I missed this k prime and k prime here. Sorry for that. So after this Fourier transformation, so if we go around this, previously I got k goes to k plus one, but we now phi k goes to phi k, but with some discrete phase some phase factor, exponential 2 pi k over n, and this opposite sign. So now, this kind of theory is um, very familiar to string theory people. This is Obifold theory. So the using Obifold theoretic argument, this twisted boundary condition is equivalent to the inversion of twisted vertex operator. But uh, we are interested in ground state, so this should have uh, some lowest energy twisted vertex operators. And twisted vertex operator at z equal u and b here. So, sorry, we in that one vertex operator and second one here. So, twisted vertex operator is written this uh, sigma, and we have some index, k over n. This k over n is just equivalent to this phase factor. So, this, if we have this twisted vertex operator, if we go around this, we have this monodrome, we have this phase factor. So we have two point function because for e, there are n seats and for each seat we have twisted operate, two twisted operators. So n copies of two point functions we have. And this is just free field theory. We know how to compute this two point function. In conformal field theory, two point function is completely fixed if we, we know the conformal, so called conformal dimension. And conformal dimension of this twist operator can be found this way. This is. Uh, very elementary exercise for this. And so this twist k over n is twist this way, field this way. And then what we have u minus v to the some conformal dimension after sum over each k by this mean, and then we get this factor. So in this way, we can get press row a to the n, which is proportional to the u minus v to the this power. And so now I replace Originally, it is equal to by some central charge. So I, I, I will come back to this next transparency. But so pre, in current example, C equal to. After, after, but for any conformal field theory with central charge C, we can have this relation. We can show this by using conformal map as we come back, just next transparency. And uh, if this is true, then we take derivative n. So we have two factor two here. And so C over three appears and log L, L is just distance between two cut, the length of this cut was two points. U minus B is L. And uh, to adjust the conformal dimension, we actually, there are hidden divergence 
cutoff scale A is hidden here. Well, actually, we can understand this dependence so that if L is A, if cutoff scale is the same as this subsystem, then nothing happens, so entropy should be zero. So this fixes this L over A, this A factor. <coughs> so this is a very famous formula, as I also previously I also listed. So for general C, we can show in the following way. This is Calabrese card argument by using conformal map. So we have this enunciated Riemann surface here, and we want to compute partition function here on this manifold. But we can conformal map this complicated manifold to just single seat by this conformal transformation. This is coordinate Z here and W is here. U and V is this cut. And uh, if you are familiar with conformal field theory, we, we know the transformation law of energy stress tensor. So TW is mapped to TZ, this coordinate, with some standard uh, coordinate transformation, but with some anomaly. If there is an anomaly, there is a surety derivative term appears here. And this term is, so this part is zero, because here it's nothing here. It's ground state, so it's zero. And here we pick up definite function. And this part is understood just exactly the same form as this, assuming that there are two vertex operators sitting U and B, and the behavior looks exactly this way. And so from this coefficient, we can read off the conformal dimension of this vertex operator, which is inserted U and B over this, uh, this twist operator. So here, it, I mean, the free field cell, we can directly calculate it. But in more general case, we can implicitly, implicitly we can derive it from surety and derivative. And this, for each seat, we have this conformal dimension of this twisted vertex operator, and we sum up for n seats and n times delta, we get this value. So this is a reason why we get so this form. And we get this result. So it is proportional to the central charge. And logarithmically depend on the length. And this breaks violates this area law, logarithmically violates. Okay, so it is possible to generalize this result by using similar trick of this conformal maps that in this paper. And I just listed some particular cases. So we, it is, we assume this infinitely long line. This is a total space and cut it out some finite length subsystem A with length X. Then we get this formula. This is I explained just before. And if you have a mass gap, we have Cushy. Cushy is a correlation length. I, show this formula in the uh, calculation of spin chain. But uh, so this Cushy is correlation length divided by A. A is again this UV cutoff, that is space. And also if you consider some final temperature, then we get this kind of result. <coughs> so actually these, uh, to derive this result is a good exercise. Actually, this final temperature result, we use a slightly different conformal map and we have compactify Euclidean time direction, but then we get this cinch. Beta is inverse temperature, but divergent structure is the same, right? So the logarithmically divergent. And uh, if we have boundary, so this, some, this kind of situation is called boundary conform field theory. We have boundary and it's a half line in the total space. Then we have some logarithmic term plus some finite correction. This finite correction, contribution to entanglement entropy is identical to what people call boundary entropy, G function or G function. G function is similar to C function. In the presence of boundary, the C cell, uh, we have G theorem, which is, means that this function Z is monotonically decreasing under RG flow of this boundary theory, assuming bulk theory is conformal, introduced by Alfred Kanud. So this G function is actually coincide with correction to this entanglement entropy. Also, we can consider uh, say infinite, but we can compactify. Then we get this sign. This periodic function should be a periodic function with sign x. And this is somehow double sort of a weak rotation between these two cases, final temperature cases, where time circle is compactified. These are very famous examples. <coughs> so if we have also, if we have more complicated situation, finite size and finite temperature, both time cycle and also space cycle is both compactified, then 
it's like theory on the torus, then the situation is more complicated. We need to know the detailed spectrum of the theory. And only uh, quantum field theory case, uh, only this free fermion cases result is available and looks like this. It's a bit complicated. We have this cinch term, but we have infinitely summation <coughs> over excitations and also additional. This term actually is summarized into so-called theta function, but this second term, this a third term is actually something looks anomalous, but this is a very important term to have this thermal entropy. So if we plot this entanglement entropy versus this subsystem length x, it gradually increases and going. If we x go to opposite side, it's not going to. So this increasing function means that's extensive part of this entropy. And because we are causing a finite temperature, so we have some contribution from thermal entropy. And this linear growth is related to this sum. <coughs> also, it is interesting to uh, note that we can actually prove C theorem by using entanglement entropy. This is done by very excellent work by Cassini and Fleming. But we, uh, we assume some relativistic uh, Lorentz invariance of some quantum field theory. So we assume some Lorentz invariance quantum field theory. And C, usually, the C theorem, which is called the monology cost C theorem, tells us that this C function is monotonically decreasing and the RG flow. C, at a fixed point, a conformal field theory, C is just central charge. And if we have two conformal field theory, they are, which are related by relevant perturbation from one CFT1 to CFT2, then this central charge CFT1 is always greater than second one. Central charge is decreasing under RG flow. But uh, we can show this in different way by using strong subrelativity, which I explained. So this example shows that the strong subjectivity originally looks a bit, I mean, just concave, func I mean, concave property. Actually, said that, I mean, this C theorem. So, uh, so now we are Lorentz invariance. So we have a subsystem A and B is slightly tilted, some boosted subsystem. Let's, talk, let's take this way. So slightly boosted subsystem A. But of course, we can do the boost and reduce to just standard space-like uh, region. But just uh, for simp just for this kind of argument, we'd like to take this way. This is the region A, and this is the region B. Then this is a right cone. This green light is a right cone, right light, null light. So this part turns out to be this covers everything A and B both. So A union B, and this small part is uh, some union. Uh, sorry, overlap of this A and B, because the future of A is like this. Future of B is like this, and the overlap region is this one. And uh, just using a metric, I mean, Lorentz, uh, Minkowski metric, we can show that the lengths, invariant lengths of this A over B and A union B, this multiplied this way, then equal to this length, A and B, invariant lengths. This is just geometrical relation, which we can easily show. And now we impose this strong subrelativity, <laughs> and uh, we just take exponential of this, uh, some log of this length. Some L A, this length is now exponential A, just to make presentation simple. We just exponential A, B, and assuming they are same, we can, we can choose particular configuration so that L A is same as L B this way. Then this inequality tells us this simple inequality. And it is already clear that this means that second derivative about this x, uh, this argument is this exponential power, this power. And the second derivative is always negative. <coughs> and as we know, so this, co as, as we explained here, it's so logarithmic x is a coefficient of log x, a log, log length is a central charge. So here, because we take an exponential of length, so a log of length, so derivative of s by x is a central charge. So we can call del, x, del s del a, so I should, here. So, try, try. so we just define this L S X derivative X and X is a log of length. So 
if we define this way, then this, this C function, entropic C function, the derivative of x is negative. So if we go to the large length scale, then monotonically decreasing. So this is proof uh, based on entropic argument. This is so-called entropic C theorem. But uh, so naively, we may expect that this kind of argument can be generalized in higher dimension. In four dimension, it's quite hard to prove a so-called A theorem. But, uh, but though there are recently nice arguments about that. But actually, it turns out this probably this doesn't work. This, argue, this inequality is not enough to prove C theorem in higher dimension, unfortunately. This only works, so, as far as I know, only works for two dimensions because of this very simple structure of the <coughs> subsystem. And so, <coughs> yes, yes. Uh, is that C function is defined there the same C function appears in the Samochiko theorem? It's slightly different. Yeah. Slightly different. It's, uh, but of course, the fixed points they are same, yeah. but its interpretation is slightly different. Yeah. Any questions? More questions? <coughs> so uh, we can. So now we leave the two-dimensional result, but go to higher dimension. So, but still we can apply this replica method to discuss the entanglement entropy in higher dimension. However, I mean, in general, it's quite hard to do that. There are no analytical way to evaluate this GN. Previously, nice thing was that this C, I mean, GN is a partition function of this n seated Riemann surface, but this just re represented by two-point function of local operator. But in higher dimension, this is not operate local operator, but it's some line operator or surface operator. We have to compute some non-local uh, correlation function. It's quite hard. And so that's the case. Because of that, many, uh, usually people do this numerical calculations, except some particular cases. So it's quite, sometimes it's quite hard in strongly, especially <laughs> take into account strong interaction, it's quite hard in this approach. So this is one motivation to explore uh, holographic calculations. But uh, still, we can get some interesting results only using quantum field theory in higher dimension. Let's focus on uh, even dimensional conformal field theory. Even dimensional conformal field theory. Then we can define so called central charges. In two dimensions, we have C. And in four dimensions, we have two central charges called A and C. And higher dimension, more. So, but uh, in other dimension, we cannot define central charge because we don't have so-called conformal anomaly. But anyway, so this kind of uh, central charge is related to the logarithmic term of entanglement entropy, which I'd like to explain here. So consider the dependence of entanglement entropy on the sides of the subsystem A, and we consider L, DS, A, DL. If we have log L, then this gives some constant this pick up coefficient of logarithmic term. And uh, just using quantum field theory, this is a, we change the length scale, this dilatation procedure. So it's just expectation value of torus, torus of energy stress tensor, this scale transformation. And uh, so to compute entanglement entropy, we first compute this torus in a manifold sigma n, and we take derivative about n, and n goes to one. This is some normalization factor of this energy stress tensor. So in this way, we can compute logarithmic uh, term in entanglement entropy from this torus anomaly. So in conformal field theory, and of course, torus um, conformal invariance, so torus part should be vanishing, but there are anomaly which uh, modify and which gives some expectation value to this uh, expression. Yeah, let's consider, to the, we already know 2 d dimension conformal field theory, but just confirm this method. So trace part of this energy tensor is known in, on a curved manifold. In general, manifold is written this way. So it's proportional to central charge C times R is a scalar curvature of this manifold, sigma n. For sigma n, we can compute this directly. So this n seeded Riemann surface, and we have some deficit angle of uh, to pi. Uh, so we have some n seeded Riemann surface. And if we go around this 
this branch point, this point, then its length is like 2 pi n. So that means deficit angle is 2 pi uh, 1 minus n. So because of this deficit angle, we have some uh, non-trivial contribution for this Euler number. This is 2 times 1 minus n. So, yeah, so, um, oh, pi, yeah, delta. So, this rich curvature looks like delta functionally divergent. This is some uh, point, this x, something like x. So its coefficient is proportional to def def deficit angle of pi delta. So if we plug this, we get this. And then, so we use this formula to have L D S A D L, and we integrate this way using this formula. We get C over 3. So in this way, we take derivative n. In this way, we, get, we can reproduce previous formula in a quick way. So in four-dimensional conform field theory, we can do the same thing. In four-dimensional conform field theory, there are two central charges, C and A. C is associated with this wild curvature square, as a stress of energy stress tensor. A is associated with topological term, which is Euler density. And both contribute. And in the end, so in the end, we can summarize this entanglement entropy is a leading divergence area low divergence, S square, proportional to 1 over S square. And subleading is logarithmically divergent, which is related to this argument, and the constant part. And this gamma 2 coefficient of log term can be fixed by this argument, as before. And we have to compute some, uh, this wire square, a wire curved square and oil density from this curved manifold, but we can do it. So in a simpler case, where here we assume that extreme curvature of this region A, so we assume that many different choices of subsystem A. So we have A, and we have this boundary. So we're assuming that this region has an extreme curvature is vanishing. This is a very strong condition, but anyway, let us assume this. Then we get a simpler result. And indeed, but still C and A both are mixed in this way. And this is a curvature. Ij denotes a direction. It's normal to this direction. An interesting thing is this, something called A. A is known to be, uh, I mean, is considered to be monotonically decreasing function. So this is called A theorem. But C is not mono, does not have this monotonic property. This looks a bit complicated. But A looks very simple. So this is just is Euler number of this boundary of A. Partial A, boundary of A is two-dimensional manifold, and this Euler uh, number of this Riemann surface is this integral. But uh, later, so we find this formula in, in quantum field design. Also, we confirm it's consistent with holographic calculation. But later, this Sorodkin and also recent work by Meyer, Hong, Myers, and Smolkin uh, derived that uh, more general formula, which can be applied to any cases. But uh, this is also, this, uh, uh, to derive this formula, we assume both cases, uh, holographic calculation and also quantum field theory calculation. In that sense, only from quantum field theory calculation, this is not completely derived. But uh, if we require that the result should be con consistent with the um, uh, holography, then we should have this. And there are, so far, there are no contradictions about it. This bit looks a bit complicated. But the important point is this A term is very still simple proportional to this Euler number of manifolds. But C term looks very complicated. This K is an extreme curvature of this A. Previously, we assumed this is zero. C is a wild curvature of this manifold. But uh, in the simpler case, simplest case is obtained by assuming this A, subsystem A, is just round ball. This A is not distorted, but just really symmetric sphere. And then partial A is just round S2. This case, Euler number is 2, so we just plug this in, and we get this uh, gamma 2. This gamma 2 is just four, minus 4 times central charge A. 
So in this case, the result looks like this. We have a quadratically divergent term, which is uh, uh, area row. And the interesting logarithmic term, we have coefficient, definite coefficient, minus four times a CFT. And this kind of result is also confirmed in some la sort of lat discretized lattice calculations by many people, and also some precise calculation, analytical calculation using some conformal maps recently, including this Myers and collaborators' work. So if we want to, so this, this is actually interesting. So if we want to pick up the nice quantity called A, then we have to look at round ball. But if we consider some cylinder-like geometry, actually you can pick up C instead of A. In that way, so if we take only this really symmetric choice, you get A. And in that case, we have some of these monotonicity properties. So that, that means the monotonicity property is not always true for entanglement entropy, and only true for particular choice of subsystems. And those, yeah, also this A, yeah, so the, already mentioned, this A instead of C, it's expected to satisfy C7. And this is proven in a holographically way, it's Myers and collaborators. Okay, so these are uh, results for this 11, uh, even dimensional conformal here, sorry. <laughs> but uh, so we can also compute entanglement entropy in auto-dimensional conformal field theory. And in auto-dimensional conformal field theory, there are no idea of this, what is a central charge. But still, this entropy gives us some finite quantity which characterize degree of freedom, and it is uh, expected to be monotonically decreasing function under RG flow. And uh, yeah, also, I will mention in probably tomorrow's talk, and that is closely related to all the dimensional version of C theorem, so called F theorem, also appears in Marcos' talk, and many higher dimensional generalization of that. <laughs> okay, so. Yeah, now also I'd like to mention another interesting recent development, mainly led by this paper by Cassini, Felt, and Myers in last year. And the idea is to use conformal map to relate entanglement entropy to something we know more, some we know very well, like thermal entropy. So yeah, let's assume A is round, round speed, round ball, round ball, which is related to central charge A, as I mentioned. But this uh, works for any dimension. We don't have to fix to even dimension or the dimension, any dimension. So we assume A is a round ball. And then we can relate this entanglement entropy in conformal field theory to some summary, some dynamical entropy in Doshita space. This is actually given by this conformal transformation, some coordinate transformation, which is actually conformal transformation. So we have some uh, metric. We just, this is a flat space metric, as you can see. So this is time, and we have just for our coordinate in space, co space coordinate. And we do this coordinate transformation. Now we introduce new time tau and new angle, uh, new space direction theta, theta. And after that, we get this metric. This is a some conformal factor, some bit complicated, some conformal factor. But up to conformal factor, this we have this doshita metric, doshita space metric. But maybe it's not easy. To, some I mean, maybe it's not easy to find find Dositta here, but uh, if we take this cos, yeah, if we take this R one, uh, one over R square, if we, one over R square is cosine theta square, then this literally agree with Dositta space time in static coordinate. And theta runs from zero to pi over two. And when this is vanishing, so pi over two is, this vanishes time, coefficient of time, met, um, metric in time direction vanishes, so this is a horizon, Doshita horizon, at this point. So this horizon coincides with R equal large R. So, so this means that following structure. So we have some flat space time, it covers everything. This metric covers everything. This metric, of course, covers all of this flat space time, but we cut it out, this light cone, this light cone, and we all would like to everything project to own 
in this uh, inside light cone. This is actually obtained by previous map, and this is this light cone area is mapped to Doshita space inside this horizon, Doshita horizon in static coordinates. So because the, and if we assume the theory, starting we have assume theory is conformal field theory, and the, then the I mean quantity is conformal invariant, and we can <coughs> find that entanglement entropy for A is equal to just some dynamical entropy in this Doshita, Doshita space time. Doshita has a horizon, so we have this just horizon area of this entropy. And so we have some entropy here. And then, but I, let's assume now, from now on, let's assume this. We are talking about odd dimension for how you say, because we don't want any conformal anomaly. If we don't have conformal anomaly, there are no sort of Casimir energy E using this Doshita invariance. This is a bit technical, but this can, we can show this ener energy is vanishing. Then thermodynamical entropy is E minus F times beta, and the free energy appears. In this way, this entanglement entropy is actually turns out to be just equal to log of partition function in all the dimensional conformal field theory, like three dimensional conformal field theory or five dimensional conformal field theory. So in this way, actually, in this particular choice of subsystem, just round the sphere or round the ball, then calculation of entanglement entropy just reduced to partition function. I also notice that here we replace now everything in the Euclidean space time. So Euclidean version of Doshita space is just sphere, Euclidean sphere. So I write it this way. <coughs> so, okay, so also one more comment. That we can consider another coordinate transformation. So we again start with this flat space time, time, and this polar coordinate, and we do a little bit different coordinate transformation. Now we introduce time tau, new time tau, and also space coordinate u. Then we get this metric. So up to again some conformal factor, we have some manifold which looks nice. This tau is actually in Euclidean signature; it is compactified, and some. S1 times, this is clearly hyperbolic manifolds, HD. So in, in, so in this way, we can relate entanglement entropy in conformal field theory to some dynamical entropy on this hyperbolic manifold. So yeah, this case, actually, sometimes this case is very useful, especially in the context of topological theories. So people, actually, these are uh, Lee Holden and Singer, they are condensed matter theorists. They are interested in topological theory, like quantum four effect or more complicated, no abelian, NU, and so on. They are actually topological field theory, so there are no degree of freedom in the bulk. So in this picture, we have hyperbolic space. As we know, boundary of hyperbolic space is a sphere, SD minus one. We have some boundary. This is some ADS, Euclidean ADS, so we have boundary. And the topological theory is bulk, is not, uh, no degree of freedom. So dynamics only appears at the edge boundary. And so the thermodynamical entropy on this manifold means just thermodynamical entropy on this edge. So this means that this entanglement entropy in topological theory is equal to the thermodynamics current entropy at the edge theory, physical spectrum on the edge theory. And more in the context of entanglement spectrum, which I also briefly mentioned, because entanglement spectrum in the bulk is actually equal to physical spectrum on the edge in topological field. So we get this very nice correspondence. This is called bulk edge correspondence. So part of bulk edge correspondence. This is something like ADS CFT correspondence for condensed matter people. They all already talk about this bulk edge correspondence. But this can be explicitly shown by using this conformal maps. Okay, so these are uh, all of my talk about quantum field theory. And so I'd like to ask questions. So next I would like to go to holographic issue. But before that, any questions? Yes. Uh, so in the case with the Fermi surface, the argument you made was just for free fermions? Yeah, good, good, yeah. What? I will come back to that in the last of my talks. But the recent analysis shows that and even in interact strongly interacting theories, still this logarithmic violation true for 
including non-Fermi liquid and so on. That is my understanding. Yeah, that, and, uh, yeah, that is interesting point. Any other questions? So I, I only, well, I don't have enough time, so I just want to only proceed a little bit and do some elementary part. So maybe I, I, I can only explain what I would. Oh, oh sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, it works. So yeah, so this is part two and about holographic entanglement entropy. And so the outline is like this. So first I'd like to, probably many of you are already familiar with the idea of area safety and holography, but I'd like to just give very brief introduction of holography, uh, which is relevant to my talk here. And so this is the next section, and then go to the main topics of this Part two, which is a holographic calculation of entanglement entropy, and I will discuss details of many properties of an application of this holographic entanglement entropy. And this topic seven and eight, nine are actually recent applications. Maybe uh, some of them may be optional. I'm not sure I, I have enough time to explain all of that. Or maybe I should concentrate on some particular topics. If you have any opinion, that is totally welcome, and I can modify my uh, choice, so please just let me know. So just uh, let me do some quick introduction of holography. So holog what is a holography? So in the presence, this is very elementary explanation. In the presence of gravity, so we have, we assume some lots of massive objects, which very, very heavy object, which are concentrated on a small region. Then we know that we, there will be some gravity, the gravitational collapse is happening, and the, such an object gets into black holes. And the black hole is characterized by the presence of horizon. And uh, we cannot, uh, observers who are outside of horizon cannot see inside, at least classically, so there are some information hidden inside the black hole. This is measured by so-called Bekenstein Hawking black hole entropy. So black hole entropy is area of horizon divided by 4G Newton. So this consideration leads to the idea of so-called entropy bound. More sophisticated bound, one is called Busso bound, or covariant entropy bound, but I'm not going into the details. i just give some very elementary bound. So some, we consider some region A here, and it's bounded by some boundary A. And the entropy, which can be accommodated in, inside A, it's bounded by this area of this boundary divided by 4G Newton. This should be true because otherwise it gets into the black holes and this inequality is saturated, so include equality. And we cannot go beyond that because this material forms black holes. So in this way, this is actually very important inequality. The degree of freedom in gravity actually proportional to the area instead of the volume, instead of volume. This area law is true for black, black holes, so it, this area law appears here. So maximum degree of freedom is actually proportional to the area. In this, of course, this is unusual because if we don't have any gravity, then entropy is in any thermodynamic system always proportional to the volume. This area doesn't appear. So motivated by this and many other, also other uh, viewpoints, so this holographic principle has been proposed to first and such kind and development, development by many people. And the, roughly speaking, uh, the holographic principle is equivalence between two theories. One is D plus, so this is my convention, D plus two dimensional some gravity theory, of hopefully this quantum gravity theory, and described by string theory. And D plus two dimensional theory is equivalent to some D plus one dimensional non-gravitational theory. Yeah, we cannot go, uh, I cannot specify more about this non gravitation This sometimes includes quantum field theory, sometimes this is matrix model, and sometimes HCFT like HCFT. And this often, this leaves as a boundary of this 
bulk. So we have bulk is d plus one, the two dimensional manifold is boundary is d plus one in my convention. So this is a holographic principle. There should be such a equivalence. Of course, this is just conjecture. And the expressed very famous example is given by so-called ADS CFT correspondence. So this, this is the best way established example of holography and found by Maldosena. <coughs> and ADS CFT claims that gravity storing theory on uh, ADS D plus two, D plus two dimensional anti dosita space is equivalent to D plus one dimensional conformal field theory. CFT on uh, in particular case are the flat space, D plus one dimensional space. And one identification is that there is a classical just geometrical symmetry of ADS space time, which is SO D plus one comma two. This is equivalent to conformal Hugh theory in D plus one dimension. So this ADS space time is uh, looks like this this warped geometry. And it's a solution to the Einstein equation with negative cosmological constant. Lambda is cosmological constant. It takes this value, ne negative. And this R, D is a dimension, and D plus two is dimension. And R is a ADS, radius of ADS. And it's typical metric with this point metric, as you all see. So Z is uh, this extra coordinate, extra dimension. And uh, X zero and XI is a this flat Minkowski metric. And the z goes to infinity, it shrinks to zero size, and z goes to zero, we, it expands infinitely, this di metric divergence. And there we have boundary of ADS. This uh, ADS CFT roughly speaking the equivalence of this bulk gravity is e equivalent to this boundary conformal Hughes. <coughs> so this is uh, summarizing the picture. In the bulk, we have ADS d plus two, and this Z is interpreted as a length scale in the sense of a renormalization group flow, energy, inverse of energy. And we, in the calculation, for example, of entanglement entropy, this cutoff is very important. We have to put a UV cutoff in this geometry. That is conveniently given by cutoff of this coordinate Z. If go, Z goes to zero, the metric divergence, and actually this is exactly the same as area of divergence of entanglement entropy, and we have to put some UV cutoff equal to Z gray. And this, it is well known that this D direction is corresponds to the length scale of conformal history under the large flow. In, in ADS, this is really just similar, similar transformation. So looks everywhere sim similar under this dilatational transformation. But in the mass gap theory, something happens in infrared that breaks scale invariance. And that total fixture is really re realizes this RG flow. And of course, in, in, this, in my talk, I only talk about ADS space time, and I, don't, I do not mention any this extra compact manifold, which should appear in string theory. Of course, string theory is 10 dimension, M theory is 11 dimension. Not only ADS, we have some compact manifolds, and I don't mention this part in this talk. But in computation, in history, uh, accommodate that degree of freedom. In the conformal field theory, so this idea is when the conformal field theory, typically they are SUN gauge theories in large limit, and one three dimensional example was already discussed by Marcos' talk just before. And another typical example is a type 2B string on ADS5 cross S5, which is dual to n equal 4, maximally supersymmetric super amuse theory in four dimension. And SUN super amuse theory. In four this large n limit corresponds to large rank limit of this Yamu theory. And this Yamu theory consists of one gauge field, which is UN, SUN gauge field, and six scalar fields. They are scalar fields, and a joint representation of this gauge group, and also a joint representation of fermions. There are four fermions according to this n equal four supersymmetry. So in addition to conformal, conformal symmetry, now we have SO6 symmetry, which rotates the six scalar fields, or SU4, which is equivalent to SU4, which rotates these fermions. This extra symmetry is called R symmetry in supersymmetric gauge theory. This is actually equal, equivalent to just classical symmetry of S5 in ADS CFT correspondence. S S5 has SO6 coordinate. Uh, okay. So, and the, 
the way we find this ADS-CFD is like this, as we uh, see in the textbook. So, and we have some D brain. So we have many D brains and D3 brains, especially in type 2B string theory. And D brain is a very heavy object. And if we take into account the back reaction in the gravity picture, it is something like black brain. And its space time is deformed into ADS5 cross S5. It starts with some flat space with many D brains, but it's deformed geometry. In the near horizon geometry, it's given by ADS5 cross S5. And these three brains extended in three plus one dimensional direction. It's a very heavy seat where we have gauge theory. In the open string picture, if we look at these D brains, there are open string between uh, D brains. As you know, there are SU and gauge theory. It's realized in the low energy limit. So this open string picture should be equivalent to closed string picture. And this equivalence is uh, the origin of ADS CFT correspondence. And we get this equivalence. Yeah. And maybe I, this is my last transparency now. So the what we learn is a type 2B string theory on ADS5 cross S5 is dual to four dimension equal four SU and super mu theory. And this symmetry, SO2, comma 4 is a map to classical symmetry of ADS5. It's mapped to four dimension conformal symmetry. SO6 is mapped to R symmetry. And uh, this, this are something already uh, discussed by Marcos. So I not uh, get into details, but uh, to suppress quantum gravity corrections, ADS radius divided by Planck length, this should be large to suppress gra quantum gravity corrections. This is equivalent to large n limit. Sorry, this one over four, this is something, uh, this is but, but it's n to the one over four, one quarter. And also we have to suppress stringy corrections. R, this ADS radius divided by string length is related to Tofuft coupling. So this is also one over four, top of the coupling. And we have, so to suppress these corrections, we have to take larger limit and also strongly couple, large, very large top of the couplings. This is a limit which I'd like to work in this talk, also next talks. So in that limit, we can ignore all of these corrections in strongly coupled large CFTs. So always we have to think about what to go beyond this limit, what kind of you know, correction we can expect, but anyway, so everything can be understood in, in particular background, including this ADS5 cross S5 uh, geometry. So yeah, today I'd like to, yeah, finish here, so thank you very much. So, questions? Okay, well, I guess there's plenty of time tomorrow and beyond. Uh, so let's thank Tadashi again. Thank you.